All right, let's go. <clears throat> Yesterday we didn't do the Pirkei Avot, so let's do it today. Here we go. The fifth mission, Rabbi Nechonya ben Hakana. Rabbi Nechonya ben Hakana, he said, who was Rabbi Nechonya ben Hakana? Let's say here's all the places in the Talmud that he appears. Okay. Rabbi Nechonya ben Hakana, he said, Call the Makabel a love all a Torah. Anyone who accepts upon himself the yoke of learning Torah, as a person that devotes himself to the Torah, to learning the Torah. Now remember, the Torah is not just a religion book. The Torah is what God wants and what God thinks right now. This is connecting. When you get ideas of the Torah in your mind, you're linking up with God right now. <clears throat> it's like putting God inside of you. It's explained in much greater length in the time in the fifth chapter. Chapter it says anyone who accepts on himself the yoke of the Torah, and he, yoke of the Torah means he learns more than he wants to. So we'll look and see. Maviri mimenu ol malchut is removed from him the yoke of the kingship. In other words, the government, the old Derek Eretz, and also the yoke of making money. Because he does make money, but this doesn't feel to be in a yoke. God helps him. He makes a small vessel, and that helps. Let's see what Bartonora says. Anyone who throws off the yoke of learning Torah, a yoke is a thing that connects the ox to the wagon. So the ox doesn't really know what's going on. He's just connected to a master by means of this yoke. The same thing by means of the Torah. We don't really understand what's going on, but we're connected to the creator of the universe by means of the Torah. So God's creating the universe. So he's creating also all the government and all the money and everything. So therefore things come to you much easier. Anyone who casts off the yoke of the Torah, then he takes on himself the yoke of the kingship of the government and the yoke of finding, making a living. These things become difficult for him. They become, how do you say, predominant in his life. Let's see what this means. Let's see. What, here we have the Baratanura. Ol Malchut, this means what the king, what the government wants. Derech Eretz, this means working hard and, and making a living. Kafisha Malachto because if you learn Torah, then you still have to work, but the work is blessed. You have a blessing. A poor of men all Torah, but a person who removes from himself the yoke of Torah, and he said, I don't like to learn Torah so much, I don't want to, then all these things come on him. I'll tell you a short story that maybe sort of illustrates this. There was a young boy that got a letter to be conscripted into the army. And this is not by, I think that he, the rabbi was involved. This was like 200 years ago. And the rabbi there was, I think, one of the great rabbis. I think it was Rabbi Yisrael of Rushin, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> anyway, the boy came, he was a healthy young fellow and the Russian army was like a death sentence. And even if you didn't die, spiritually for sure was a death sentence because it was the Russian army, Polish army, whatever, it was basically the same. You couldn't do Torah there. You couldn't learn commandments. You couldn't be different. You couldn't, you couldn't in any way, uh, the, <clears throat> as I say, advertise your Judaism in any way, because they were tremendous anti-Semites. They, they anti-Semites. Maybe the Polish army. Anyway, so the Rebbe told him, no, you'll be a good soldier. He said, Rebbe, but you have the power. You can get me out of this. You know, he gave blessings to others that they didn't. I don't want to be a soldier. So what do you mean? You're, you're going to be a great soldier. You don't worry about it. Just go back into the into the uh, into the synagogue where you were, and sit and learn. Sit and learn. Learn the Torah, and and they'll come and get you. Until they come and get you, at least learn as much as you can. The merit of the Torah will protect you. He says, but Rebbe, I don't want to go into the army at all. That's it. The Rebbe stuck. So he went back home. Sure enough, he told his parents. 
what the Rebbe said. <clears throat> and they said, okay, you just go to the place of learning and sit down and learn, find people, we'll get people to learn with you all day. And partners, learning partners, and we'll bring you food, we'll bring you a change of clothes. And you just sit and learn, right? As much as you can. When you have to go to sleep, you go to sleep. When you have to go to the bathroom, when you have to eat. Except for that, don't waste the moment. So sat and he learned. No, if you're going to need any second, there's going to be a knock on the door. And the soldiers are going to come and arrest him. So he sits and he learns. He's waiting just in trepidation of this knock on the door. A week passes, two weeks, a month passes. Until he finally forgets about it. He gets into learning. And he realizes he's got to sit and learn. And worrying about it is not going to help anyway. So he learns and he has partners that he sits and learns with. And he's learning and learning. Other people join him. There's a whole bunch of... After about two years... Of this, he's learning constantly. And in the next room, they make a special room for him where he can sit and learn, sleep and this. He can go to sleep. After about two years, two and a half years, there's a knock on the door. Suddenly the door bursts open. Two huge Polish soldiers are standing there. And you know, they've got like these swords and these bandoliers or whatever it is. And one of them yells out, Borach Borachovich, that's him. This is the guy stand so everybody's quiet they look at the poor guy and he's standing up he sticks his chest out he figures i'll accept it whatever it was i sat and learned that's my merit you come over to him and says Borov borovich you have been honorably discharged from the service because of your gallantry and your self-sacrifice and your tremendous heroism as a soldier and they give him this big medal they present him with this big document that he has uh, uh, now been discharged, honorably discharged with honors from the honor. They raise his, his rank to a major, whatever it is, and they give him a big kiss, both of them, and they leave. And he's just amazed. And he goes back to the Rebbe. He says, Rebbe, you won't believe what happened. He says, I, of course, I, I understand. But they, they came, they gave you a big a medal, and they discharged you honorably from the army. He says, what do you mean discharged you? I wasn't even in the army. I didn't go in at all. The Rebbe says, what are you talking about? You were in the army of God. Tzivot Hashem, you sat and you learned Torah day and light. You risked your whole being, right? You didn't have a minute of comfort. That's like a soldier. And because you were a soldier, so God arranged it. That's what it says. A makabal love, all malchus, all Torah, the sex on itself, accepts one who sex on himself. The yoke of Torah, as it comes off from him, it is removed from him, the yoke of the government. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, tomorrow, 8.15 in the morning, we will learn Hasid will finish the the the, the, the var malchut of the Rebbe, and also there's something also very nice we can learn. Shalom, uvracha. See you tomorrow.